Hi, I'm Pastor Joe Spence. I know this message is going to encourage you, strengthen you, and take you to the next level. Stay tuned to the end. I want to pray a special prayer with you. Enjoy the broadcast. So we've been talking about the favor of God, and, and the favor of God has a lot to do with your destiny and, 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 and your walk with God uh, in, the, in the life, in the world that we're living in. Uh, it's going to be necessary for you to live in the favor of God to see the assignment fulfilled on your life. Amen. You need the favor of God. Uh, and so we define favor, uh, four main uh, definitions of favor. Number one. Uh, This is, we're doing a little review if you weren't here last week. Number one, something granted out of goodwill. Number two, an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual. And number three, preferential treatment. (laughs) Come on, amen. Preferential treatment. Glory to God. Number four, advantage. I like that one. Having an advantage means having something working for us that others don't have working for them. One day of favor or an encounter with favor is worth more than a lifetime of labor, right? I'd rather have God's favor on my life than than having to strive every day, strive every day to get ahead, to try to make things happen. When you rely on God's favor, things happen supernaturally. You know, we've been so blessed and so privileged. Just even the fact that we're in this building, Pastor James Epperly used to pastor in this building. And, and uh, you know, I know a lot of people that wanted to be in this building. But why did he choose us, right? Why did he say, life in Christ, I want you guys to be the ones to take this building over because he was moving into another building. That's God's favor. Amen. People ask me, how did you get that place? How did and, You know, it never went on the market. He called me the day I was going to sign a lease on another place. The day I woke up, and, and then the place I was going to w- w- was not the place I really wanted to be in, but we needed to, to be out of where we were, and, and I figured, okay, we'll go there, and it'll buy us some time, and, and I was getting ready to go, and he calls me, and he says, hey, Pastor Joe, I've been thinking uh, I need someone to take over my lease, and, and I'd like for you to consider it, and I said, oh, glory to God. I had been here, and I had seen the place, and I thought, man, this place is wonderful. This place is amazing. I would love to be in here. And, 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 and he, he said, yep. And, and so we, and we took the place. And, and, you know, this place was four times the amount of rent we were used to paying. And, you know, we were only about 50 people about that time. By the way, this is about our one-year anniversary of being in this building. Amen. So God is so faithful. Last Sunday was one year of being in this building. And so w- when we moved in this building, it was four times the amount of rent. And so we, you know, financially didn't make sense to move here. But, I mean, you know, you don't go. This is what I'm trying to tell you. You don't go by what you see. And you don't just make rash decisions and do what you want to do. You hear from the Holy Ghost. Intimacy with the Holy Ghost, come on, will birth the vision and the plan. Amen. And so we took time, and we, we took time to hear from the Lord. And, and the Lord said, yep, that's the place. We stepped out. And within a week, someone calls and said, we're going to pay for your whole first year. Amen. About $50,000. Come on, amen. Glory to God. That's the favor of the Lord. Amen. When you're in his will and doing what he's called you to do, come on, the wind will be at your back. The, the wind of the Holy Ghost will be at your back, pushing you, lifting you. Instead of the wave crushing you, the wave starts to lift you. Amen. That's what the grace and the favor of God will do for you. And so being in here, incredible. And then, and then uh, having um, Pastor Mark Hankins come and, and Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. Do you know how many people want him to come to their church? It ain't even funny. People are still asking me, how did you get him to come to your church? The, the, the fact of the matter is I didn't. I never even asked him. He called me. That's the favor of the Lord. Come on, that is God's faithfulness to this church. Come on, the favor of God. That meeting helped us, propelled us to another level. Amen. Favor. Somebody say favor. Favor ain't fair. Amen. People that went to his Bible school that are so close to him, that have churches close by, that he didn't go to their church. Why did he come here? I don't know. It ain't fair. I know. (laughs) But that's favor. Glory to God. Don't look at me. Talk to the boss. (laughs) Come on. And so that's what favor will do. Favor will promote you. Come on. Amen. Will lift you up when when, when there are no promotions happening. Uh, Somebody in our church, come on. Nope. You know, they had to be there for a certain amount of time to get a raise. The boss said, nope. Sorry, I won't, we're just going to forget about that room. We're going to give you a raise. That's favor, amen. That kind of thing happening, not just here and there, but on a continual basis. That's the covenant right of the believer, continual favor showing up in your life. But, but you have to see it on the inside. 
Come on, you have to see yourself favored if you're like, well, I'm not sure. I'm not, well, this isn't some kind of thing, you know, I talk about with prayer. You know, we're going to pray 10, hope 5, stick. No, well, we're not gambling when it comes to prayer. Same thing with favor. This isn't a, a chance thing. This isn't a, well, I hope this works. No, this is the favor of God every single time. Amen. The favor of the Lord. And so we declare every morning we're going somewhere. The favor of God surrounds us is with the shield. We have favor with God and with man. People like us. People want to do things for us. Come on. Doors are opened up unto us. Amen. And then we leave it in God's hand. I don't try to make things happen. Come on. I don't start to try to strive and, and, and cut corners and try to, no, 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 I rest in God's promise, amen, and we always see it come to pass, glory to God, and so th that's the definition of favor, I want to talk to you about 10, we might not get all of them today, and that's okay, 10 benefits to walking in God's favor, 10 benefits to walking in God's favor, number one, will experience supernatural increase and promotion. Benefit number one, we will experience supernatural increase and promotion. We saw Joseph when he was sold into slavery, ended up at Potiphar's house. The favor of God, the Bible said, was on his life. He rose to the head of that household. Potiphar's wife lied on him, ended up in jail. Come on, he rose to the head of the jail, and, and, and one night he's in the, 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 the prison. The next night, come on, he's in the palace. That's what favor will do. It'll cause you to be promoted. It'll cause you to, to rise to the top. So increase and promotion. You need to see that. Write that down. Ex I will experience, say that, I will experience supernatural increase and promotion. Number two. We will experience the restoration of everything the enemy has stolen. Come on. The restoration of everything the enemy has stolen. <laughs> Come on. The, the children of, uh, uh, of Israel were held captive by the Egyptians for over 400 years. But when they were let loose, come on, they, they had gold and silver. Things had been restored to them. They were held in captivity one day. The next day, they had gold and silver. Things were all restored back unto them. And so God will restore to you the things that have been stolen by the enemy. Amen. Say that with me. Say, I will, I will. experience the restoration of everything the enemy has stolen. Praise the Lord. Yep, we declare the favor of God will restore to us everything the enemy has stolen. Number three, we will receive honor even in the midst of our adversaries. Adversaries. So we will receive honor even in the midst of our adversaries. Honor even in the midst of our adversaries. Praise the Lord. He sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Come on. David saw it. Table before us in the presence of our enemies. Number four, we will increase in assets, especially in the area of land and real estate. And we're talking about 10 benefits of favor. Number four, we will increase in assets, especially in the area of land and real estate. Praise God. Number five. This is good right here. We'll experience great victories in the face of long odds. We'll experience great victories in the face of long odds. Where it looks like there's no way that we're going to see a victory here. When you declare God's favor, come on, amen, things will start to shift. Many a times, Joshua was surrounded, uh, outgunned, uh, out chariot, oh, the whole nine. The favor of God showed up. Come on, victory started to turn the, the, the day. And so that'll be your story, right? Outnumbered, outgunned, but the favor of God will start to turn your situation. You may be behind. You may be in, in, in a place right now where you don't know how, how you're going to get out of it. Start to declare the favor of God in that situation and you'll start to rise come on the grace of God will start to lift you amen amen and, and you know one of the hindrances to favor is 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 pride right because the Bible says those that humble themselves will be exalted so humbling ourselves means letting God take care of it amen resting in his promises not trying to get ahead of God not trying to force things or manipulate things 
manipulating things is a force is, is a is a type of pride, right? Trying to make things happen, trying to wiggle your way into a place. But when the favor of God does it, man, it's sweet. It is sweet. I've told you, uh, we've ended up in rooms and back green rooms with ministers and people that I've only dreamed about meeting. And but the favor of God, come on, because we've humbled ourselves and say, no, but we're not striving for that. You know, it's a dream, but I will not try to manipulate my way into that. Absolutely not. But God saw to it because of my heart because of you know how we've decided to rely on him for these kind of things come on that's when things start to shake and move amen but I've seen it too many times I you know you'll watch ministers and they'll try to you know manipulate the situation and it never works out he resists the proud he actually comes against that kind of spirit that kind of that way of doing things right amen he said those that come to the front will be asked to the back but those that go to the back will be asked to the front Come on, amen. That's a principle there, right? Uh, always preferring others. That'll produce major favor in your life. Major favor in your life. God has favored certain people, but because of their attitude we saw last week, attitude is such a, an important component to favor. Your attitude will cripple favor in your life. Come on, your attitude. Come on, your facial expression. Gratitude is a conduit of favor gratitude thank you so much for that loyalty come on standing with people that have helped you come on people that have that have been a blessing to you right being loyal to them that's a conduit of favor come on amen people often overlook these things excellence is a conduit to favor excellence doing things well you know god god will ask somebody to favor you but they'll come in and say wait a minute they don't do things with excellence they're going to squander what i'm going to give them and, and so it won't happen i have a pastor friend of mine who, who who's done really well for himself and he was getting ready to to bless this pastor to pay off this pastor's building he was a guest minister in this building and the lord had said pay this man's building off and so he said all right and the man uh, the pastor took my friend into the green room and in the green room everything was just it was in shambles it was like half eaten you know uh, salad trays and like you could have bought a brand new salad tray for the guest minister, not the one you used for the last guest minister, right? It just looked like it, they did no excellence. There was no spirit of excellence in anything that they did. And my friend said, I'm not paying their building off. They're going to squander what I give them. They can't even do things with excellence. My friend's not in there to be high maintenance. I know him. I, just, I know that that's how he is. But because this pastor didn't do things well with excellence, he lost the favor of God, on, which in turn would have been his building being paid off come on amen for someone to say i'm going to pay this building off for a year meant that there was favor and they saw excellence they they knew that we were not going to squander and look we've grown we started out with about 50 people when we moved in here we're over 150 people now increase on every front amen things are are moving ahead that's how it should be that's how favor operates but but man you can you can stop the favor of god in your life your attitude come on with 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 the with the flight attendant can stop the favor of god on your life you at the ticket counter treating this person a certain kind of way don't you know that person can help you that person can lead you down a, a, a corridor that ain't meant for you to be walking down but because that you were nice and you were you were kind to that person you end up in a place that man ooh, I've seen that happen countless times just just having a respectful attitude Come on, amen. This, this is very spiritual things that I'm talking about right now. Don't overlook a good attitude, a smile on your face, gracious with people. Uh, come on, right? Gracious with your waiter, amen. Gracious with your mechanic, gracious with, with people that you may think are low, less than you. you. You mess around and be nasty with them, you'll see God's favor be evaporated in your life. Like just go up and smoke. Like you Forget about favor if you can't treat people right. Come on, amen. Treating people right goes a long way. The favor of God. Number six, we'll receive recognition even when we are least likely to be selected. <laughs> Come on, we'll receive recognition even when we are the least likely to be selected. Come on, you know the story of David, right? Uh, 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 Samuel shows up to the house of Jesse and says, bring all your sons up here. We're going to see which one is the next king of Israel. They didn't even call David because he was a shepherd. He was a nothing. He was this short. He's out there with the sheep. All the other brothers are strong in the, in the sight of man. They, they must, one of them must be the next king. Least likely to be selected, David. But Samuel comes. No, 
uh, one's missing. Oh, you mean David? Yeah, go get him. Come on, amen. The, the favor of God will cause you to be selected even when you're the least likely to be selected. Come on, amen. Well, I don't see how I'll ever get a promotion. You know, I just, well, but these people have better education, better this. The favor of God will put you in places that you don't even qualify for in the natural. Come on, amen. And they're talking about you need this, you need that, you need this. But if you're diligent about your business, come on, you're diligent about your business and you get to it, right? Uh, God will see to it that favor shows up and brings you to where you're supposed to be. Come on, the diligent person, amen, diligent, going after. If, if you're a mechanic, strive to be the best mechanic, come on, ever. Come on, if you're a janitor, be the best janitor they've ever seen, amen. That'll cause you to rise to the top. Let them see a, an attitude of, of wanting to improve and to grow. Uh, allow yourself to be correctable and teachable, come on. And no matter where you are in the, in the company, being teachable goes a long way. That opens the door to favor. That helped me so much when I worked for Joyce Meyer Ministries, allowing correction to come into my life. Uh, Pastor Joel Sims says, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Well, not anybody can handle feedback. Some people fall apart if you give them feedback. If you fall apart at feedback, God can't use you very much. Come on. Amen. Uh, you, you're only going to be used to the level in which you can handle correction. If somebody corrects you and you start to get offended, that's as far as you go, pal. Right? Amen. And I'm trying to go places with the Lord. And so I've made up my mind, Lord, correct me. Do what you got to do. Come on. If I got something on my face, I want my pastor to tell me. I ain't trying to walk around with something on my face. Amen. Come on. I want to make the adjustment, make the correction so that I can go where he, the places that he has for me. Come on. Amen. I can do what he's called me to do and not be stuck year after year going around the same mountain, doing the same thing, seeing the same people, same scenery. Nothing's changed for 10 years. Depression, this, that. Come on. It's time to break out of that. Amen. It's time to go into new territory, new places. Come on. Glory to God. I'm talking to you. Come on. I'm not talking to your neighbor. I'm talking to you. Come on. Amen. This message is for you. Well, I hope so-and-so is here. I uh, hope they're hearing this. No, you need to be hearing this. It's time for you to go to another level. It's time for, for God to raise you up and so that you can go forth in the plan and purpose of God. Amen. It's going to take humility. Say, I'm humble. I'm not sure. If you say you're humble, I'm not really sure you're humble. A guy at church got the, the pin for the most humble man in the church, right? The next week, the pastor had to take it because he started to wear the pin. <laughs> he said, oh, you're wearing it now. You ain't humble. <laughs> number six. Oh, we already did number six. Number seven. Kind of goes hand in hand with the other one, but we'll experience preferential treatment. Number seven, we'll experience preferential treatment. James 4.10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift us up. And 1 Peter 5.6 instructs us, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that may, he may exalt you in due time. Remember, God's not opposed to us being exalted. He's opposed to us doing the exalting, right? He'll exalt us, and that's what he wants. He wants to be the one to lift us. When we start to try to lift ourselves, recipe for disaster. And you don't even want to mess with that dangerous territory. Because when the Lord brings you down, you, you're going down. Come on, amen. Not, not that he puts something on you, but he'll, he'll, he'll shut the doors. He'll shut the opportunities until you repent and get back on track. Especially, you know, if you're influencing people and, and people are looking to you because he, he will protect his people. Come on, they're those that you're influencing. And so it's, it's a very serious thing, you know. Uh, and so we're getting better at this. God is helping us in this area and he's showing us some things in this area so that we can grow. Amen. This church is founded on, on, on growth. We want to see you grow. Come on, that's the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to be a pastor. I want to see people grow in the plan of God. I got tired of just seeing people go through the same thing, seeing the same, doing the same thing. No, no, it's time to grow. Amen. Say, I'm growing, I'm developing in the plan and purpose of God. Amen. Number eight, our petitions will be granted even by ungodly civil authorities. That's one of the benefits of favor. Our petitions will be granted even by ungodly authority. We know uh, Queen Esther, her petition was granted by the king, right? Ungodly authority, favor was on her life. 
And so, you know, you may say, well, I don't know, you know, the, the, the government or this or that. Come on, we're believing even right now for some paperwork to go through with the government. And so we're believing for favor. Our petitions will be granted. Amen. By even by ungodly authority, God is causing that, that paperwork to be favored, our situation to be favored, favorable outcome. Amen. <laughs> right? No matter, you may be dealing with the IRS, the, the you know, INS, I don't know who, FBI, hopefully not the FBI, but, but you, you can declare <laughs> God's favor favor right in that situation amen listen to this benefit number nine policies rules and law will be changed or reversed to our advantage come on I believe this I believe this come on policies rules and law will be changed or reversed to our advantage you, you look at Queen Esther, right, uh, and, and Mordecai, they were able to change the law of the land, right, in, in their favor when Haman tried to, to, to call, you know, cause all the Jews to be exterminated, but, but because they were favored, that whole situation turned, amen. Come on, a Jew in that land changed the law. They were given the king's ring and the signet to, to write their own decree and stamp it themselves, amen. That's favor, man. That is the favor of the Lord. Well, Pastor, I don't know the zoning here. They don't allow that here. Well, you'll be the first one. Amen. Come on. You'll be the first one because you're favorite of the Lord. Amen. I, I, come on. We need to get audacious in this and just start to believe God at his word and, and, and allow him to move on our behalf. Come on. And, and, and like I said before, come on. If you're dealing with a situation that requires favor and you just can't see it, meditate until you have a vision of victory on the inside. Amen. You'll start to talk differently. You'll start to turn that situation around by what you say and how you're acting and so it's important that until you have a vision of victory that you don't say nothing. Come on, don't allow your mouth to, to, to sink the ship. Back in World War II, they had a saying, loose lips sink ships, right? People talking about where this and where that's going to be, the enemy would get a hold of it because they, people would be talking too much and they would sink their ships. And so that, the enemy's the same way. Today, he's waiting for you to open up your mouth to, to, to sink the ship because remember, your mouth, your words have so much power, they're containers that will fulfill, right? Come on, what they're sent out to do. See your words as containers that will, that will create, come on, uh, and, 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 you know, that's how this world was created. This world was created by words, right? God created this way. He said light be and light was, right? We're using his words, and he's given us the same power, life and death, and the power of the tongue. And so speaking life. So policies, rules, and law will be changed or reversed for our advantage. Verse 10. We won't have to fight some battles because God will fight them for us. Come on, the favor of God come on, will cause God to fight some battles because he'll fight them for us. Amen. Most of us are familiar with the words young David spoke to the Philistine giant before he killed him with a stone. You come to me with the sword, with the spear, and with the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Then all the assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. Amen. Come on, when, when we put our faith in God and his great favor, he will fight our battles for us. That's not to say we'll never have to take a stand and exercise our faith, but we'll have certainty, we'll, we'll, we will have certainly never have to fight our battles in our own strength. Come on, amen. You don't have to fight your battles in your own strength when you have the favor of God working in your life. Come on, we've, we, we've heard with our ears, oh God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in, in, in their days. In the days of old, you drove out nations with your hand, but them you planted, you afflicted the peoples and cast them out, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance because you favored them. So they, they received the victory because God had favored them. We read that scripture last week. And so when you're facing uh, 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 an obstacle or things, you know, come up in your life that you don't see a way out, don't, don't, your first instinct shouldn't be, how am I going to overcome this? Your first instinct should apply, the, to, to, it should be to apply the favor of God to that situation. Declare. Remember, you shall declare a thing and it shall be established, right? So declare the favor of God in operation in that situation. Situation and watch that thing turn, baby. Amen. I say, I declare the favor of God working in every situation in my life. 
Come on, amen. Glory to God. I see things turning right now. I see situations shifting right now. Come on, favorable outcomes. Come on, because you're called according to his purpose, because you love God, he works all things for your good. Come on, turns things around. Amen. Come on, causes you to increase and to prosper, causes promotion to come your way, causes people to like you and to want to do things for you. Amen. Makes a way where there seems to be no way, opens the door that no man can can shut that door could be shut for years but when you show up that thing opens up amen because it's the right time and the right person declaring the right thing amen go ahead and stand to your feet we're going to take a few minutes right now a few seconds to rejoice and to give god thanks for favor working in our lives come on let's just pray and lift your hands holy hands unto heaven we thank you father for favor we thank you for your divine hand and an operation in our lives we thank you for your goodness and your mercy oh you're such a good god oh we thank you lord come on let the fruit of your lips come on sacrifice of praise thank you lord thank you thank you thank you lord pray Praise you, Lord. Oh, we give you thanks. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, you are mighty. Your right hand is mighty. Your power is mighty. Turning around the situation. We rely on you. We thank you for that. You are the way maker. Ha, ha, ha. Way maker. Making a way where there seems to be no way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Parting the Red Sea in the name of Jesus. Glory. Glory, hallelujah, praise you, Lord. Oh, we give you glory. <laughs> we give you praise. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray the message blessed you. We never like to end a broadcast without giving you the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you mean business with God, he means business with you. I want you to join me in praying this very simple but powerful prayer. Mean it with all your heart. Repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sin and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you were crucified, and on the third day you rose from the dead. I give you my life. Do something with it. I believe I am now saved in Jesus' name. The Bible says all the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you just prayed that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. Thank you so much for watching. For more content, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. We pray you would consider partnering with us to see souls saved and the gospel preached around the world. God is not finished with America. Stand with us as we contend for revival in our land. Here are some ways you can give. Go to licchurch.com slash give, or you can give through our cash app, or you can scan the QR code. We love you and have a blessed day.